morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how are you? Good. 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 Good.
if you do not have your video and you cannot present in front of the class, it's going to be zero, okay? So make sure that it's ready for tomorrow, right? The week after, next week, we're going to do a C1 activity. What's C1? CR. C1 is CR, yes. <laughs> but it's an interaction, okay? So you have to speak to each other. You're going to be in small groups, like with uh, the best day of my life, remember? No. So it's very similar to that, but you're going to be talking about your uh, finances project. Okay. So you guys are, should be experts on your subject right now. Uh, yeah. So you should be able to explain your subject to others. That means you're not going to be on the same team as, as for your project. Okay. So that's what we're doing together until the end. I'm leaving on the 20th. Okay. So in, at the end of next week, it's bye-bye. Yeah, I know. So that's what that's the last activity that we'll be doing today. Now you might you might ask yourself why there is a cell phone at the back. That's because I'm filming myself, okay? So I'm going to be supervised by someone, someone that is going to watch that video and to evaluate. So nothing nothing very stressful. We're just doing this quick activity together. Sounds good? Alright. So, zombies. Did you guys watch zombie TV shows before? No. Yeah, yeah no, Walking Dead? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> any, any, any other TV shows with zombies that you know of? Huh? There are a few movies, too. <laughs> movies. Zombie Land. Hi. Hi. Hi, you told me there was nobody here. How's everybody feeling? Good. Good? Good? Yeah. Uh, what did I want? Uh, I didn't know. Uh, it's the other uh, job. No, <laughs> oh, you it's don't, empty. You don't have any? But I must have cleaned yeah, it. Yeah, my hands are That's All what right. happened. Oh, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours. I wanted to give it back, but I couldn't recall who, you know, whose it was. <laughs> no playing with that, then. Put it in your pocket. If you play with it, he's going to come yeah, to me. Yeah, it's going to give it to me. It's going to be the same thing over and over again. Okay. All right, zombie movies. Uh, what zombie movies have you have you seen? Zombie Land, Zombie Land Two. No. No. Uh, Night of the Living Dead. That's an old one. No. Uh, World War Z. World War Z. No. no. I am Legend. No. No. I well, Call of Duty is a video game. But okay. Yeah, Call of Duty, Duty 2 with the zombies, sure. No, uh, Duty 2. <laughs> yeah. So in general, what, yeah, World War Z. Who here has never seen a zombie movie? You've never seen one? So much ever. Wow. I'm surprised. You usually, you know, there, there was a trend in the 2010s. There was a lot of zombie movies, zombie TV shows. Very popular. All right, well, you guys are going to learn something today. Good? Yeah? Okay. What we're going to do first, okay? I want you guys to learn a little bit more about zombie apocalypse. Yes, is that? Zombie is like a <laughs> No, no, coronavirus is the, uh, is like the, an actual virus. Uh, you don't become a zombie if you have that virus. <laughs> that there are no real zombies as far as we know. So, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to watch a video on zombies. It's a video about how to survive the zombie apocalypse. There are 10 tips, okay? 10 tips. Your goal, your goal is to write them down, remember them, and at the end, we're going to go through the 10 tips. And you'll have to explain to me what they mean. Yes? The tip is an advice. It's a lesson, it's an idea. Alright, eyes on me. 
Mouth shut. Yeah. Do you all have something to write on? Yeah. yeah. Good. So the video is about 10 minutes. I'll stop halfway through. We'll go through the first five tips. And then I'll start it over again. We'll go through the last tips together. Okay? I put subtitles on because I care about you guys. Okay? So, tips are advice. Okay. Ready? I expect you guys to be in silence, okay? So, I expect you guys to be in silence if you are not. One warning, and then you're out. So, in silence while you're watching. Good? Let's start this. Oh, sorry. Being bald gives them extra fast access to my brains. They were really after me. The zombie apocalypse is something everyone fantasizes about because of TV shows and movies. But have you ever thought about what would happen if it actually happened? Would you really have any clue of what to actually do? Well, with the help of The Walking Dead No Man's Land, who's sponsoring this video, I'm about to tell you. Here are 10 ways to survive the zombie apocalypse. Number 10 is don't go solo. Traveling in groups can seem hazardous at times. You know, not knowing who's hiding a bite and will end up trying to snack on your flesh in the middle of the night. But experts agree that should the zombie apocalypse ever actually befall our civilization, your odds of survival are far better with allies surrounding you. Being in a group means having people watching your back, especially at night when you're asleep. They also make supply runs safer and shorter ordeals and help intimidate and defend against other human groups who might want to steal your stuff. More people on your side means less against you. Plus, let's not discount the fact that having teammates means that you have access to cannon fodder. I mean, let's be completely honest. Why, you gotta check out the dark storage shed yourself when Kevin's eager to prove himself, right? Go get him, Kev. Number nine is go up, not down. You know in scary slasher movies where the victim is always running upstairs in order to flee the killer just to corner themselves and die anyway? Well, when you're being chased by the dead, it's actually a good tactic. I mean, let's be completely honest. Zombies are pretty terrible at climbing stairs or ladders for that matter, which means if they break down your door, your best bet is to move to higher ground preferably up a ladder to an attic when possible. Then once you're there, just stay super quiet and out of sight until the walkers hear something else and uh, shamble up. You're more than welcome to try going downstairs instead, maybe even hiding in your basement. But as it turns out, zombies are actually pretty good at the whole down thing, basically just falling down the stairs, sometimes in large numbers, standing back up and then, you know, consuming your face. Number eight is practice room clearing. Just because you've seen a zombie movie doesn't mean you're an expert at determining where the undead will be during a search of a building or area. Your group is going to live a lot longer if you practice as often as possible. You should run drills for supply runs with some additional people playing the zombies. It's best to move in groups of three, back to back to back, with your shoulders touching your teammates' shoulders. Okay, are we actually doing this? Yeah, you go first. They might eat your face. What happened? This way, your back is never actually turned to a zombie, as your allies should be able to spot it. Also, check everything. In refrigerators, under beds, in bathroom stalls, and be ready for a sudden surprise. You might think zombies are wicked dumb. There's no way they could climb into a basket. That is, until one bursts out of a hamper and sinks their teeth into you. Oh, clean laundry. Oh my god! Number seven is learn nonverbal signals. Trust me, you definitely don't want to be that one person who yells out, There's a horde of zombies over there! and draws an army of undead to your group. It's not exactly going to make you Mr. Popular. 
So the best way to avoid such a mistake is by learning to communicate with hand motions or other nonverbal methods. One way is obviously through sign language, but that can take a long time to signal and will be next to impossible while you're holding a weapon. Your best bet for you and your group of fellow survivors is to establish a handful of hand signals that will convey simple messages such as single zombie, horde, or armed humans. Don't forget the basics such as stop and get ready. You may even want to throw in a I need to pee, as you never know when that's going to be a necessary message while some walkers are moving by. Number six is pick appropriate weapons. If you're looking to survive in a zombie world for a long time, then reserving bullets is a must. When dealing with a single zombie, it's time to get closer and more physical with light weapons while keeping in mind that flashy kills are for the movies. Large sledgehammers and pickaxes look cool, but if you don't have the strength to pull it free of a skull in one motion, you can find yourself killing just one while becoming lunch for his buddies. Alternatively, it might seem simple or even fun to set one on fire and let it burn to ashes, but that flaming walker is still coming for you, igniting all of his surroundings and fellow brain eaters as well. It might not be long before you find yourself surrounded by not just zombies, but flaming zombies. Plus, say goodbye to that city block, as most of the firefighters are likely gone. Or zombies. All right, first five tips of how to survive the zombie apocalypse. Here, hold your eyes. So, did you guys ever learn bits like that before? No? There, there are stuff that there are not just usual, usually used with zombies, there are some that can be used in everyday survival situations, but these are specific, specifically tailored for zombies. What was number one? Don't go solo. Yes. By raising your hand next time, can you stop? Thanks. Don't go solo. What does that mean? Stay in groups. Be surrounded by allies. Yeah. You don't want to be alone in a zombie apocalypse. Number two was Isaac. Go up, not down. Go up, not down. Why? Because they're not near. That's really important. Yeah, zombies aren't able to climb. They're just and they're they're going to fall down the stairs, and they're going to eat you if you go in the basement. But if you go in the attic, you should probably be safe. What was number three? Yes, Zachary. Practice room clearing. Practice room clearing. What's that? It's um, check everywhere. Yeah. So when you arrive in a room, what do you do? You check everywhere. So it, it looks something like that. Okay. For example, you have a gun. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> and you've seen everywhere. You're like, okay, it's clear. Okay. You want to be sure that there are no zombies around. Number four was, well, reverse that. Uh, mm, somebody else? Matisse? What was number four? Uh, Nonverbal signals. Nonverbal signals, yeah. So, like, for example, uh, no, no, you can do something, yeah, Isaac? You can do something with your hands, yeah. You can learn facial expressions. You're like, it's like, okay, don't go there. Okay, stop. Go, go, go. Stuff like that. You want people to be able to communicate in silence. What was the next one? Email. Uh, Jody? Big appropriate weapons. Big appropriate weapons. Wow. So, in this context for zombies, what does it mean? I think, uh, I don't know, but a gun. Okay. I a gun to shoot them where? And the, and the head, no? Yeah, the head. Yeah, zombies' weaknesses are head, their head. But a gun is loud, yeah? Bang! So what can you choose besides for that, Zach? Like a baseball bat. Yeah, a baseball bat. Bang! Okay? And you need something that's not too heavy. Yeah, do you want to burn them, Maris? No. No, you don't want to because they're just going to continue walking while they're on fire. All right. Let's continue for the next five. Five Now focus on the video. Have fun. Okay, this one might sound weird, but hear me out. While fighting off the armies of undead that are constantly trying to kill you, it becomes easy to 
start losing it if you don't take some me time. It may even seem ridiculous to even consider having a little fun during the zombie apocalypse, but keeping your sanity and enjoying what life you have left is super important. A good way is to find a way to get your cell phone charged and play a mobile game like the Walking Dead No Man's Land. Sure, cell towers are no longer working and you can't text your mom anymore, Yep. some techniques that you can use in the real world. It's actually available for download in the description below, but I'll tell you more about that later. Number four is Armor Up. If movie and television zombies have taught us anything, it's that the undead always go for exposed skin, the neck, arms, or face, but if you're faced with a real-life zombie apocalypse, get creative and leave nothing exposed. When the dead rise, you can bet that armed forces will be armored up, and you should be too. Now, if you can't get body armor from a zombie SWAT team member or undead army ranger, then make your own. Lining a snowsuit with thick plastic and metal will make you slow but nearly unbiteable. Think about it, a knight in full plate mail armor and a helmet wouldn't be worried about getting bit. Plus, having everyone in your group armored like that comes with an added benefit. If one of them gets infected and turns, they will have a really hard time biting you with all that metal on their head. Duh, John turned. It's okay though, his face is in metal. He can't bite us. Look at him. Look at him trying. He's cute. Number three is always keep food and water on you. After you literally cover yourself in food and water, I mean, keep some around you that wasn't clear. As long as there are hungry zombies roaming around, you should never go anywhere without a survival bag. The most important contents being a few days worth of food and water. If you find yourself pinned down and hiding from a horde of walkers, unless something draws their attention away, they could be loitering in the vicinity for a long time. Which means that you're stuck in that crawl space, on top of that truck or underneath the dumpster with no means of sustaining yourself. That is, unless you've taken this advice and can nibble quietly on rations. Plus, ain't nobody got time to be hangry. It's a good idea to have an emergency bag by your side at all times, especially when you sleep. You never know when you'll only have a few seconds to rush to safety, and how long you survive in that safe place is directly related to how prepared you are. Number two is get in shape. Okay, zombies are coming after me. Okay, I got this, don't worry. There's no telling when the undead uprising will commence. It could be 10 years from now, one year from now, or <clears throat> tomorrow. So why not start preparing for it today? When the walkers start, well, walking, you should be ready to run. Use this as an excellent exercise to get in better shape. Pumping some iron and increasing your strength and endurance will help you take out the brain eaters more efficiently. Remember, you need to be able to pull a weapon out of a skull to be effective. You don't want to be like, hey! Oh god, they're coming, oh god, no! Add in some cardio to be sure you're fast on your feet and be able to dodge whatever hellish thing will be inevitably jumping out at you. You know what they say about zombies, you don't actually need to outrun the horde, you just need to be faster than the guy behind you. And number one is start preparing now. The number one best way to survive a zombie apocalypse is to be ready for it. The Center for Disease Control has created a real list of what you'll need. It includes food and water, emergency first aid supplies, hygiene products like soap and bleach, blankets, dry clothes, tools, and copies of your important personal documents. You know, in case you need to do some faxing or something. They even recommend keeping at least a week's worth of prescription medications aside so you don't have to race to the pharmacy in zombie traffic. It may seem silly to get ready for such an event, but these things will also prepare you for other more natural disasters. There's no real way to be truly ready to handle your friends and loved ones being turned into mindless, undead beasts bent on devouring your face, but you can at least gas up your chainsaw, you know, just in case. So, that was 10 ways to survive the zombie apocalypse. Alright, so these are all of the 10 tips. So what was number 5, Jose? Number 6? Number 6? Have fun. Have fun, why? Why do you want to have fun during a zombie apocalypse? Do you have an idea why? No? So, can somebody help? Me with that? Why, why, why should I be happy even if there's a zombie apocalypse? Yeah, yeah, you can lose your brain. You can lose, yeah, you can lose your mind. You can go crazy because of depression. And you just decide, oh, it's 
to hell with it, it doesn't matter, okay? No, but you have to stay positive. So that's why you need to have fun, or at least, you know, don't be the best. What was number seven? Maybe? Armor up. Armor up, okay, armor up, so how do you do that? Put the armor on you like a... So like medieval suit, like shining knight armor with a sword? No. Wait. No? How do you do that? When pursued with the metal and the metal. Okay, so bits and pieces. Uh, if I have like a winter suit, yeah, I could put that on. The idea is you don't want to be bit. What was the next one? Um, yes, is that always keep food and water. Always keep food and water. Why? Why do I want to keep food and water? To survive. Yeah, because I eat, because I drink. You know, I'm a human. I need to drink like some water at least every week, and even then, it's not enough. I need to eat at least you know once in a month. Otherwise, I'm just dead. You need to eat and drink more than that. That's just like if you if you want to just not die. And what was the other one? Uh, like get in shape. Yes, get in shape. Why? Are you ready to run or get away? Yeah. Uh, did you watch Zombieland? No. No? Who here has watched Zombieland? Shop? Uh, what was the first rule of Zombieland? The first rule was cardio. Okay. First rule is always be able to run because if you're able to outrun the zombies, good for you, you won't get bitten, but you don't want to be the one who's the uh, first. You don't want to be the one who's last in the in the outrun. The one who's last is the one who's going to be eaten. Okay. You don't. You want to be at least the second to last. Okay. And what was the last tip? Uh, well, yeah. Start preparing now. Start preparing now. Yeah. You should. And that's not only for zombie apocalypse. So what did he say you should prepare? Food and water. Food water. Yeah. Something else. Pills. Medication, Zach? Huh? Uh, sure. Yeah, but you, you can use that as a weapon too, or you can file it. Uh, you need clothes, you need, you know, anything that you will put in, in an emergency bag. All right. So, these are 10 tips, okay? Now, you should be more or less experts on how to survive the zombie apocalypse. So, I'm going to give you a job. All right? You're going to have a very important responsibility. You're going to choose who gets to survive and who dies. Okay? No, 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 that's in the classroom, okay? <laughs> okay. So everyone here survives, okay? We're we're all part of a committee, and we choose who will survive and who will die in a list of survivors. Right. So, zombies have taken over the world. It's done. Exactly. It's a dumb word. Zombies have taken over the world. It's over. It's. Come on. Just sit straight. Good. It's over. There's nothing we can do. All we can, all we know is that we have a bunker. We're in the bunker. We're safe. But we have to choose ten individuals who will help us survive once the zombies are gone, okay? Or once there are less zombies, okay? So in, well, outside the bunker, there are 20 survivors, okay? 20 people we can choose from. These people have different skills. They have different relationships with, with each other, okay? What, did, what do I mean by that, okay? Well, there's Benjamin. Benjamin is 35 years old, you have to take that, take that into account. He's 35 years old, and he's a doctor. He's been doing surgeries. That's a useful skill to have. Okay? You also have Dan. He's 55 years old. He's also a doctor, so he has more experience, but he's older. So, you have to choose. Uh, so you have some farmers, you have kids, okay? Rosa, Rosa and uh, Lily, yeah. 
Those aren't really our kids, but they are. <laughs> They are Emily. Rosa and Lily are Emily's children. Yeah, guys, uh, I'm going to go back to the other. Okay, I, I just I just want to take a look at this. Okay, Emily has two children. She has Rosa and Lily. So if you decide to just take Emily, Emily is going to be depressed because she doesn't have her children. Okay. So you have, to, you have to choose. Some people are husband and wife. Some have other people they care about. No, don't say that. Okay. See, let, let's not decide. Okay, we're just going to take this person because we want you know to use it as a bait. That's not a good idea. We want people who are useful and who are going to be happy. All right. So. You have to take that into account while you choose. It's going to be a team activity, okay? So I, mean, I expect you to speak in English and to use the functional language I have here. Okay? You have to say what you think, state your opinion. You have to ask what the others think. So, hey, do you think we should take this person? You have to say if you agree, say if you disagree. Okay? This is a good practice for next week. It's going to be an interaction activity. Okay. So, since you guys were so great with telling me what the tips were, I'm going to let you guys choose your own teams. Okay. I expect teams of four. Okay. You're going to go in small groups, and I will give you your sheets with the list of survivors. And at the back, you have to tell me the 10 that you chose. Once we're done, I'm going to write down who has had more votes in the survivors, and the ones that have the most votes are going to be the ones that we choose as class. And then we'll decide is this a good team or is this not a good team. Sounds good? Yeah. You've got a few minutes to prepare your team, and then I'll give you your sheets. Thank you. 
Moi, ça m'a rajouté de la joie dans la Ouais, c'est un gros chien. Ouais, ouais. C'est un gros chien. Ouais, ouais. Ah, sérieux, c'est écrit un Ah, ben il est vieux, il est lousse. Ouais, on va tuer des zombies. Somebody want to tell me the world is gonna be thinking we do Hey now, I'm a rock star. Hey! Hey Jess, c'est bizarre, tiens. J'ai trois fois le même cahier. J'avais pas perdu. Somebody want to tell me the world is gonna be. Hey now, I'm a rock star. Hey now, I'm a rock star. So what's your final list? You say the puppy? Nice. We have to have fun. It's it's for you know moral support. You got McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can do that. That's we we take McDonald's. We take the McDonald's because you have food in there. He knows how to cook burgers. Yeah, yeah, true. True. It's like ba basic cooking skills. You can do burgers. Zombie burgers? You're gonna eat zombie burgers? Yummy! It's already the same part, so I'm okay
six votes for Benjamin. Wow. Yeah, but well, Benjamin is a doctor, so yeah, he's a doctor. He's 35 years old. So. Yeah, but their money isn't that useful with zombies. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Shop. Focus on me. Who voted for Melissa? She sat. It's a boy move. Boy move. Only three for the farmer. So what are you going to do after the apocalypse? You have to farm the Rosa! Who voted for Rosa? One team? Oh, two teams. Oh, sorry. Oh, one. Two. No, 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 Ça, 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 ça,
So you have a doctor and a nurse. Good choice. Jacob, he's a survivor. Very useful once you come out of the bunker. Gab, so a 20 year old student, a student teacher in history, the boyfriend of Jacob. So Jacob and Gab are going to be happy. And Gab is able to teach. So at least you chose one teacher, but you did not choose the right teacher. <laughs> There's Oliver, he's 10 years old, he wants to become a doctor. So hey, good, good thinking, Benjamin is going to be able to teach him. Jimmy, 20 years old, the boss of a big company. Why did you choose Jimmy? Because he's young? No, he's oh, leader, leadership. Wow, good idea. Excellent. Riley, the seven-year-old orphan, he's like the underdog. He's the one who's going to survive against all odds, for sure. And Faith, the police officer, so she has some practice with firearms. She's able to, you know, come back zombies. Very nice. We've got our team of winners. Yeah. So, do you think this team is going to survive after yes. the apocalypse? Yes. Yes. Raise your hand if you think yes. Yes, they're going to survive. Oh. Yeah? Okay. Raise your hand if you think no, they're not going to survive. Okay, okay. Now we've got our team. There's no there's no camera in the zombie apocalypse. Okay. Zach, go back to English, okay? Now, you guys, what we're going to do next is first. I want to talk a little bit about your oral presentation. Okay. Your homework. Your homework for next time is something that you should already be doing. I need you guys to have your PowerPoint ready and your presentation ready. We have our team, uh, not our team, we have our oral presentations with you guys are tomorrow. Okay? That's not a lot of time. Make sure that you're prepared. Okay? So either you give me a video on the USB key or on YouTube. You need to give me the link if it's on YouTube. Or you present it in front of the class okay? using the projector. Yes, Alice? Yes. yes. This is your homework from the other time, okay? I'm going to pick these up. You were supposed to have your 10 vocabulary words. Yeah, only 10. Okay. That was supposed to be done before. Now. Also make sure, shh, make sure that you have this sheet, you know the one with the example of a PowerPoint behind? Because I'm using this sheet to evaluate you, need your name and your group on. So if you don't have it with you right now, find it and bring it tomorrow. Uh, you have a question? No? Somebody raise their hand. Gary D, you have a question? Okay. Good. Make sure you have this sheet tomorrow, that's very important. I want to know who has prepared a video. Okay. Uh, raise, raise all of the team's hands. Okay, so one. Okay. No, every, everyone, if you have a video, raise your hand. Everyone in the team. Okay, so that's two teams. Okay, so we'll have all of the other teams presenting tomorrow. Okay. I expect about two minutes per person. If you have less than one minute, that's not good. So at least a minute, but I expect around two minutes. Okay. Yes, each person at least one minute. Okay. If, you, if I don't have one minute, I'm not able to evaluate you properly. Okay. And if I have two minutes, it's like, okay, I have some, some uh, time to think and I can see everything, I can hear everything. <coughs> The zombie activity, 
this was formative, you don't have to keep it. But I like the team which is It's a very nice team. I'm I'm curious to see what the other teams will do. Now there's about four minutes left until the bell rings. Okay. I need you guys to make sure that everyone in the in the teams are going to be ready. Okay. Just go to your teams for the presentation and make it very quick that you know who's doing what.